Hello tanks and tankettes, welcome to a pair of view replays and today it is the mouse we are taking a look at. Now most of the time when you see a mouse on this channel it is one of my own mouse games because I do like this tank an awful lot. But it's been a little while since we've had uh, the last mouse game up so I decided today I would let somebody else get their turn in the spotlight. We've actually got two games here which are going to be very very different indeed and the first one is well, there are maybe one or two things to be learned from it, but it's mostly for the silliness factor. Now, I will say, Captain Cake here, and it's actually his second time on the channel, he had a Crusader game a couple months ago, in fact more than a couple of months, but uh, yeah, that's, that's not that often that somebody uh, uh, gets uh, a second showing, not because the... I, I tend to try and make it fair, so I, I, you know, if someone's had an outing already, I do get sent a fair number of replays, so... I, generally speaking, count it against them if they've already appeared, but in this case, this particular play was... Well, you'll see. But basically, he's doing the wrong thing here. In fact, he's not alone in that, but even so, uh, what's happening on the minimap right now, and by the way, watch the E75s in front. Full health, you know, T92, no problem. In fact, uh, uh, our T92 just nuked a, a T54 in the enemy team as well. Balanced. Anyway. This side of the map has got all of the muscle. It's got the E75s, it's got the 110E3, it's got the Panzer E100, and there's also that Conqueror there. And this is 9.9, .9, so it's the buffed Conqueror. On the other side, well, the enemy team had pretty much most of their tanks. We've seen a Fosh 155 and an E75 over here. So this is completely disproportionate for the number of enemies that have turned out to be here. And yes, that is hindsight knowing that, and also something that's very silly is about to happen. I mean, you can't always uh, predict T92 AP bounce. Yep. You can't always predict where an enemy team's going to go, but you can usually, at least at the start of a battle, have a rough idea of where the greatest concentrations of tanks might be. And especially in a slow tank like the Mouse or like the E75s, not that they're slow, slow, but they're not fast. That initial deploy deployment is really important. So, Cake coming over here. From a tactical point of view, from the kind of uh, how this map is played point of view, that was the wrong move to make. However, he's at least going back, which is more than can be said for the other tanks that were here. The other flank, meanwhile, were utterly just overrun. They had a bunch of, uh, basically, enemies that weren't afraid. They had the numbers, they knew they had the numbers, and instead of just playing peekaboo, they just, they went for it. And so, the fact that our beefy tank destroyers were on that side, apart from the Yakpan 3100, the fact that the mediums were on that side, didn't really matter. They just got utterly overwhelmed. So, 5-9. They did go down swinging. Those enemies have taken some damage, but this is looking pretty bad. However, we can see that some of those enemies have gone back to their own cap to try and prevent them from being capped. We ended up with a completely, well not completely asymmetric, but most of the enemy team went on the west flank. A good chunk of the top tiers of this team went on the east flank. And so they've gone back to defend because otherwise they were in danger of being capped out. However, we're also in danger, severe danger. The RT died, and it's now just this uh, Jaegeru and Captain Cake here. And the T-5041, well, you might think it was a bit strange that he basically ignored Cake, but he had the rear of a Jagdpanzer E-100 to shoot at, so okay. Fine, I can see why you would prioritise that and just take the hit from the mouse. However, instead of trying to make a getaway, I'm pretty sure from that location you can actually... There's a little bit that you can drop down and be closer to the cap circle. Whilst reloading, he just kind of sat there, and that's allowed Cake to do more damage to it. Now, they're all prioritising this Jagdpanzer E100, and okay, he's got the lower health, he's got a fixed gun, and they can do it relatively safely, but Cake is shooting them all the while. And although this uh, PTA is trying to use that Jagdpanzer E100 to shield himself from Cake's gun, it's not really working out too well. Meanwhile, in the south, the tanks that did go down there, the, uh, the E3, the 5E75, the Conqueror, they got wiped out. K 
Cake is now alone versus five tanks. Yes, you can see where this is going. Now, the IS-3, we know, is super low health, poses absolutely no threat, so that's an easy kill. We'll just take him out right away. And although the IS-3 uh, did get some uh, somewhat controversial changes, it had its uh, armor layout changed a bit, because it definitely needed it, right? Uh, it's not going to resist a mouse at close range. Meanwhile, meep meep. Hello, bat chat. Now... That seemed a bit odd to me, but on reflection I thought, yeah, he's probably out of ammunition. The bat chat doesn't have a lot. The E-50's actions, on the other hand, are a whole lot less explainable. He looks like he's going to try and ram a mouse. And even though he avoided doing that, to try and kind of side hug him? I don't know what that was about at all. Ah, there's the bat chat. No, he must be out of ammo, but even so, I don't know what that was. Are you trying to run away make it a draw well that's the wrong way to go about it so now it's him and it's not one versus five it's one versus two and the t30 is the only one with any hit points left now that uh t30 well i say that it's not even they're both one shot kills for this gun but uh yeah that's the first substantial damage he's taken has been from that uh that that t30 so we know the guy's got his top gun that could be dangerous now it's at this moment that disaster strikes and something happens with Cake's internet connection and the chat suddenly goes, oh crap, he's disconnected. And because there's a whole bunch of people still watching this, you will see that from the chat, believe me. Uh, but it looks like he has disconnected to everybody else and this is, this is just, yeah. Now I don't know how he took that second hit from the T30 without the T30 being spotted. A T-30 shooting from uh, stealth from less than 150 metres distance is, in fact, less than 120 metres distance. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that works. Sometimes the spotting in this game is a little opaque, if you will, forgive the pun. Anyway, tries to get a snapshot. Well, it's not quite a snapshot. It was mostly aimed, but unfortunately it goes low into the ground. And he is in a position here of having to angle against two different machines. But... The positions of these two tank destroyers relative to each other, and again it goes low, is such that he can actually manage to effectively angle against both of them. If they were at uh, sort of, uh, say, 180 degrees, if they were opposite each other and they had him uh, between them, basically, instead of at this, what, 45, 50 degree angle? then he would be in more trouble than he is. And you can see the SU actually trying to get more of a shot on his flat side armour. Although, that one just goes uh, nowhere, really. The T-30 may be trying to open up the angle, but when you've got a mouse... Uh, and Cake, you know, deliberately was clearly letting that one settle. He wanted to make that kill, had to make that kill. To, to just keep going across the open like that and to expose your weak hull armor in a T-30, that, that was a bad move. So maybe he could have disengaged and tried to come around from a different angle, although that would have maybe left the 12254 vulnerable, but I don't know, whatever. The 12254 is now alone, and I've actually not sped this up as much as I might have because the chat is a little bit amusing. There's also... One or two words that I did consider blurring out, but honestly, uh, for me to blur out the chat in a game, it has to be just unbelievably toxic. And one or two bad words is like, okay, that's that's just an average game of World of Tanks, to be quite honest. Um, but yeah, there's a kind of a back and forth in the chat, and people are going, oh, it's a draw. And other people are going, no, well, actually, there's plenty of time. I mean, the mouse is not particularly fast, but there's time enough on this map for him to go from one cap to the other. Now this is risky because if he gets spotted doing this, the 12254 is by far the faster machine, can go back to their cap and at that point, can he get back to decap in time? Maybe. Now that's a risk for the 12254, certainly, but this is equally risky because now the 12254 is going to know where he is and is possibly, um, well, going to, to try and kill him is unlikely at this point. 
But if the guy is unwilling to uh, concede defeat, he may try and force a draw. At which point, uh, uh, he just has to, before the uh, 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 capture timer gets too far, and uh, obviously it has to be close enough to the end of the battle so that there's no time left to cap, he just has to pop out and either uh, do some damage or get a track critical or something. That will reset Cake's uh, point and it'll be a draw. And on one level you can say, well, that's a dick move. On the other level you can say, well, it's the only way he can reasonably um, not concede defeat because his chances of uh, taking a thousand health off a mouse when he's a one shot is unlikely. So Cake at this point, extremely nervous, because it's all come down to this. He can only angle so many ways, and it all depends what the guy fires. And if it's uh, an HE shell, he's probably going to take some damage, it probably will be reset. And it is an HE shell, and he takes no damage, and he wins by cap. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, the initial positioning from Cake and a whole bunch of his teammates was all wrong, and... The cascade of events that resulted from it resulted in this. So it was not a sensible match at all, but it resulted in a Kolobanovs and an invader for a mouse. Damage-wise, it was all right. I mean, 4,000 damage, I'd be reasonably happy with that. And he got a top gun, 1167 base XP. And actually, the enemy 12254 was at top of his team with just about an identical amount of damage. And again, for that gun, that's probably all right. It's only got, I think, 400 average uh, that that particular machine it's uh, that whole line is basically all about the the mobility but they have numerous drawbacks which means they're not particularly well loved by the world of tanks community but even so whatever you think about his um attempt to to draw it out at the end there uh, i think that's just one of those things where being in a mouse in that situation there are very few other tanks that could have gotten away with that the e100 uh, quite possibly Although that's got fewer hit points to work with and maybe more obvious weak spots than a mouse. But yeah, I, I otherwise I'm struggling to think of anything else that could maybe do that. I mean, an IS-7, for instance, probably would have taken track damage at the end because it doesn't have those track covers as the mouse does. So therefore it would have been a draw and I might have showed it anyway, but anyhow, moving on, we have... Barbican here, and I think that's how it's supposed to be pronounced, in, again, the mouse, slightly older replay, this is from 9.5, so uh, it might be a little bit derpy, but this game is going to be rather more um, serious, I'll put it that way, because the last one I selected for its silliness value, just the, uh, the whole situation was silly. Now, there's no artillery, and that is going to be absolutely crucial. That's going to allow Barbican to uh, use the mouse to do one of the two things that it really does best. And in this case, it is to uh, hold this flank and to be an immovable object that the enemy team are going to have a hard time getting past. And that's going to be important because in the south, there is a bit of a concentration of medium tanks. But his support in the north... Uh, the team is all a bit scattered around. Nobody's particularly grouped up together, so it's going to be very hard to make this into uh, a push at all. He can't really do it on his own. But he does at least have enough nearby tanks to prevent him from being overwhelmed by the enemy machine. So it's a bit of a stalemate. But if he wasn't able to be here in the mouse, I mean if there was artillery in the game then it wouldn't at all. He'd be a prime target and there's every chance that the uh, enemies would be able to push past this position and sweep up what else there is in the north. Now I was actually platooned up with somebody in uh, an M48 pattern or a pattern 3 as it says there. They actually changed the, uh, the identifier on the screen at some point in the uh, latter 9.x patches don't know why but basically the reason why they picked these out and this is what he said in his email is, is that they are for the both of them tanks that neither of them particularly like or do well in and for Ugrin there it was the pattern and for Barbican it's the mouse but 
I like the maps, so, you know, hopefully after this game, Barbican had a slightly better appreciation of what it can do. Because when you get the chance to do something like this, when there isn't that artillery just messing up your day, then it can be a very powerful tool on the battlefield indeed. Now, a lot of the first part of this battle is just... I mean, he really can't push here. He basically is a bunker, and... We actually saw Captain Cake in the last one angling uh, reasonably well and he his initial positioning was all wrong but he at least knew how to angle the mouse and actually Barbican as well uh, you'll see at various points is angling his tank very well you know you angle the the turret in between shots you don't leave it pointed at enemies that you know might be able to hurt you and uh, you don't, if at all possible, expose your lower front plate. Now he's got APCR loaded because that Yak Tiger is Pretty much hold down. And with the AP, you're never going to get through the superstructure of a Yak Tiger. The E50, on the other hand, he's already penned the guy through the turret once. And hello! Well, that was a little unexpected. The enemy E75 tried to make a push around him and was thoroughly uh, punished for it. And that's where the support of his teammates came in very useful. They're not particularly well grouped together, not particularly. Uh, numerous, but they, there are enough of them, and they do have some of them big enough guns. Particularly the uh, uh, what, one of the Waffenträger fours in particular actually comes out of this with a, a, a rather nice result as well. Now Ugrin unfortunately has just uh, died to that WZ-131, and the IS-7, I guess, just gets bored. Very inadvisable to make a push. He's put himself in the line of fire of a few tanks anyway and uh, Barbican himself actually manages to get in a shot but it is one of the Waffentrakers that actually finishes him. Now at this point his greatest asset also becomes a liability. He can't really push up and chase uh, a medium tank because very well armoured though this can be and although he has basically been the linchpin that the, has held this flank together Trying to chase down a medium tank, especially if it involves going up and around a hill, especially when it's a T-54, which is a rather mobile medium tank. Well, anything's mobile compared to a mouse, except, you know, T-95s and TOGs and whatever. He really is kind of tied down now by his own immobility, his own inability to actually uh, uh, sufficiently uh, move well enough to chase down a... a medium tank and there are some actually reasonably well armored heavies that would still struggle but if you're an IS-7 for instance um, you'd probably have a little bit of a better time of it uh, obviously there are much less armored heavies like say the 50B where you would have a, a very much better time of it but he basically needs that T-54 to come to him in some way because if he goes chasing after that guy at that point uh, he's lost his good position and he's also vulnerable to, say, the WZ-141 or maybe one of the, the tanks from the south. I mean, maybe the Lorraine's repositioned and is sneaking up the zero line. We wouldn't know if that were the case. But uh, time's kind of running out in that his teammates are kind of running out. Most of the mediums that went south have died. There's a lone T-54 left and he's actually beating a retreat. They also lost one of the Waffentragers. They've got one left, they've got a Rheinmetall left, and neither of those are particularly well armoured. So, being tied down here, and there he is, spotted. We know there's stuff still on that ridge. He's a bit... I mean, it's not really a good position to be in. And that's where the mouse can suffer, when you've got this kind of, you know, where you need something to happen, but if you move forward and try and make it happen... That might make things go badly wrong all on its own. However, the T-54 did make a move. He was able to get a hit in, and that T-34 won. Well, that must have been a hairy moment for him. But although it was uh, a, a bit painful for him in terms of being uh, bait for that T-54, the fact that the T-54 took that bait meant that they've now pretty much secured the north of the map. There's still a WZ-131 unaccounted for, but that's not such a major problem. I mean, the T-54 on its own wasn't that much of a problem, but, but let's say Barbican had abandoned this position, gone south, tried to go towards the cap, or pushed up towards him. 
There's every chance the T-54 could have then uh, maybe gone after that T-34-1, taken him out. Maybe gone after the Rheinmetall. Who knows? That's all speculation. That's all what-ifs. So there's the Lorraine, who is about to, uh, well, he did bad things to that T-54 and the Waffle finished him off. But our Waffle gets him, so Barbican can turn his attention back to that guy, who he's already taken most of the health off. And despite this not being particularly advantageous positioning, he manages to bounce the shot anyway. If the Waffle had aimed a little better, he probably would have had a very nice shot at the lower front plate. But as it was, he hasn't taken any further damage, so that's fine. However, that is two enemy tanks on the cap. We know the WZ-131 obviously went south. And at this point, the enemy team has got a slight numbers advantage, but they're about to lose that because that was a rather unwise moment to keep. And I have to say, actually, knowing that Barbican was likely to be coming down this line, not quite sure why he chose to, to, to do that. So that's two tanks on the cap, and he said himself that... Thank God it was an encounter mode, because otherwise they'd have been in serious trouble. He certainly wouldn't have been able to get back in time in a mouse. Now we've got one recap, which is... Uh, recap? Decap, which is great. And there we go, the uh, Rymantle kills that Lerva, which it means the... I mean, the, the 110's still got a bunch of capture points, but it means the rate of capture has been halved. So it's still useful, even if it's not quite as useful as having decapped the 110, it still buys them some time. The Waffle and the T-54, meanwhile, have grouped up in the west. And I think the Waffle's still got a reasonable amount of health left, but he's in a Waffle. So, not a lot of armour. And this is pretty close, uh, we just lost the Rhyme at all on the ridge, so... He's not going to have any support, uh, at least from that ridge line, however... He's still got a lot of health, and he's still got mouse armour. And the only thing that might pose a real threat is the enemy Rheinmetall, depending on what kind of gun he's got. I mean, I suppose if the T-54E1 got up behind you with uh, heat ammo, for instance, that could do a lot of damage very quickly as well. Uh, the 54 e1s gun is not particularly great in terms of its handling stats, it's not particularly great in terms of its accuracy or its penetration, but it's 400 damage per shot on a medium tank, and if you get the chance to clip somebody, that adds up awfully quickly. However, the T-54E1 has uh, died. We've just lost the, the Waffle 4, um, but that bit of movement to the, the north and west is useful because it gives... Uh, well, it, not that even Barbican really needed that distraction to move up. He could have just moved up anyway, to be honest. But if an opportunity comes up like that, you might as well just take uh, advantage of it anyway. So the WZ-131 is down. That's fine. It means the, uh, they don't have to chase him. I mean, if the T-54 had died and then Barbican had been in the position of having to chase the WZ-131 in a mouse, that would not have been fun. So we're down to the last two enemies, and although the Rhyme at all is full health, doesn't have a lot of armour, the mouse's gun is pretty nice. You know, it's the same gun the E75 and the VKB uses. It's a, a very meaty, uh, uh, hard-hitting gun. It's just, it doesn't, on the mouse, have a particularly fantastic reload. I mean, that's the main thing with the mouse, is that it, it is more the, the armour, and I think sometimes people underestimate the gun that it has, but... There are occasions when the slower reload can be uh, rather unpleasant, in a 1v1 especially. However, not in this case, because that is a stock 1 tank. And that is why, uh, in many cases, in this game, stock grinds suck quite so badly, because you are placed against tanks, as in this case, that you can't possibly hurt. And the 110 especially, it is as bad as a, an, an IS-6. I, I mean, can you imagine an IS-6? Or a 112 or a WZ111 in a tier 10 battle with 175 average pen. I mean, it's, it's, and that gun handling, it's just bad. I feel bad for that guy, is what I'm saying. So that was another race mastery, and again, a steel wall. I'm, I actually neglected to look at the bounced damage for that previous game, but it was over 7,000. In this case, Barber Khan did over 7,000 damage. Not quite as many kills, and actually only a little bit more XP. It was by an extra, what, 100 XP? But that just goes to show you that you keep chipping away, you know, you get chances to use this gun, it adds up. 
and it was by far the most damage on his team, but the lack of artillery was what absolutely made all of that possible. And in this case, also over 7,000 damage blocked. So there we go. Two uh, over 7k uh, uh, blocked damage games, and one of them was a 7k damage game in just damage done as well. So that was rather nice. So there we go. That was a rather more serious tactical bit of mouse gameplay, and it, it uh, shows why I think the mouse has definitely a place on the battlefield. I know it gets looked down on, but a well-played mouse can be a serious threat to an enemy team, and it can be a serious asset to your own team as well. However, the presence of artillery often severely limits that, so... Yeah, my own good games in the mouse tend to be ones where there aren't much arty like that one, unsurprisingly. So, um, one last note, if you have noticed recently I've done a lot of these kind of doubled up view replays, well, that's because I have. Because I'm trying to fit in a bit more World of War Tanks, World of, World of, War Tanks, what? World of Warships content, it means that uh, setting aside a, a, an upload for just doing a single view replay is a little bit less practical these days, so you'll probably see a lot more of uh, these doubled up games. Unfortunately, for the moment, that means they're going to be 720p but there's not a lot I can do about that. So I hope you enjoyed both of these games, uh, I certainly did. If you did you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can subscribe to my channel and as always stay tuned for more.